Welcome everyone to the Ichiban Nonsense Podcast, where YouTube's future patch is going to nerf all of us in some way. I'm BitWZan, and joining me as always is the Nonsense Crew, and we are the Ichiban Gamer Club. Joining me is a man who's constantly getting nerf in his time management skills, Mazentius, on, his east, on the East Coast. Yeah. What's up, everyone? Also joining us is a woman whose nap skills have been buffed so much she's close to putting the whole world to sleep. <laughs> Secret <laughs> Kitty. Yes. <laughs> My cult is working. Uh, sadly, Minister won't be joining us this week, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll trudge along without him. But if you couldn't tell, the main topic for this week, I think, is going to be uh, the changes coming in Overwatch. Um, they put out a, a patch on the PTR that I can honestly say is going to change the scene of Overwatch upcoming. Now, I haven't gotten my chance to get hands on on this. I don't know. Mez, I think you're the only one here that has access to the PTR. Did you get on it anyway or no? No, I didn't. Oh, okay, so. Um, so besides putting out the newest hero, Baptiste, they also made some big changes to like um, how damage is dealt how damage is like been boosted, um, how armor types and how beam type damage is uh is uh, ramped up. So I'm gonna just run down the whole list of all the changes they got, or at least a majority of them that I I feel like it's gonna affect us. And then we can talk about how that is gonna affect us because a lot of these changes we've discussed before are made primarily for those at the higher level of Overwatch, especially those that playing the Overwatch League. Because um, as I stated before, they're primarily using the the, the GOATS meta, which is the 3-3 support and tank. And I guess uh, they're tired of seeing that. So, uh, yeah, they're, they are trying to kill that meta. And they are making drastic actions. So, here are the hero updates. For one thing, on armor, on the armor side of things, uh, so beam type damage is now being reduced by 20% when hitting armor. So you can imagine that's going to mean Symmetra and um, Zarya. So that damage is going to go down, at least when hitting armor. Uh, damage over time effects are no longer mitigated by armor. Um, and then the developer comments that the damage taken by armor from damage over time effects, such as Widowmaker's Venomine and beam weapons like Symmetra's Photon Projector, varied greatly. Now will be more consistent and predictable. Uh, so damage boost is another thing they changed. Damage boost is now applied when a projectile is fired rather than when it is hits the target. So what I got from that was that before when you were boosted as say, let's say uh, Farah, she's like a rocket projectileist. Um, the damage boost only took effect when it actually hit the target. So now what they're changing is to be saying that once she fires it, the damage boost is automatically ap applied, whether or not it hits the target. So that's going to like ramp, ramp up her damage dealing. Um, this one's a big one, knockback. So knockback distance is now more consistent. So heroes that are flying can now be knocked back and, knocked back and slowed. Uh, and they comment that knockbacks are now less affected by how the enemy was moving when they were hit, instead having a small or large knockback that depend on chance uh, knockbacks will feel similar regardless of the enemy's movement leading up to the knockback, allowing flying heroes like Mercy, when using her Valkyrie or D.Va, using her booster ability, to be properly knocked back makes for more fluid, realistic gameplay. And I've seen examples of this one. This one's going to be kind of crazy, especially with characters like Lucio, where his boops can send people flying. So before, this is something that I didn't even know existed, where... You could fight against Lucio's boops. So, like, if you're flying in as D.Va and Lucio tries to boop you, you can kind of, like, like fight against that so that you won't be. Or even if you're, like, you know, just standing there. If you're, like, if you push forward, you can essentially fight against the boop and not be thrown off. Like, I mean, you can still be, you're still going to be pushed, but it won't be as, like, as far as the boop is intended. And I guess now they're changing that so that it is. Hmm. Yeah, so, like I said, so characters that are flying that they, they don't have any, like, stance or anything like that are going to be, like, launched, it feels like. And, like I said, I saw one where, like, Mercy was 
in Valkyrie mode and trying to resurrect somebody and was just completely launched away from the person. Oh Whereas before, when you were resurrecting somebody, you can kind of like, you know, stay in there and like depending on where Lucio hit you from and what angle it was from, yeah. you could, you know, sustain it, but that's no more. Um, and the reason for that is, again, the, the GOATS meta because Lucio is a big component of that and like separating the the tanks from their support and stuff like that which is primarily what they all try to do is like stay together um and the last one for just the overall updates is sound um a new sound is gonna uh, play when you land a hit while damage boosted and a new sound is gonna play when you land a hit but doesn't do any damage so how would it um they did this what? How? it's just gonna make a different noise compared to like when you when when you're damage boosted it lets you know that you're you know you are damage boosted, a new sound is going to play. And when you're hitting somebody but not doing any damage. When? So with, like, the addition of Baptiste and his, like, invincibility field. Oh. Oh. Okay, yeah. yeah. You're going to be, like, hitting characters, but they won't be going down a certain, like, percent, I think. Right? Well, it was, like, when they get to, like, the last, like, 20% or whatever of their health. Yeah, that's what it look like. It's, like, invincibility. They get invincible there. So I guess that's just indicating to you that, like, yeah, you're hitting them, but they're not going to die. Mm. I... So now we get to the actual hero updates, actual character ones. We start off at the top with Anna. Um, her nano boost, the heal has been reduced from three hundred to two fifty. So, uh, yeah, I, th that's a weird one because like I thought that was fine. Like I don't know if yeah. <laughs> why she needed any nerf there. Um, but they're just trying to like devalue the 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 heroes the supports in favor of like damage dealing right now so they figured let's nerf this one um doomfist he he got a slight buff here for both his rising uppercut and seismic slam uh they both the cooldowns for those have been reduced from seven to six seconds which i don't think is enough but who knows maybe one second lower is is just Enough, something more, something that he might need. I don't know. <laughs> you sound biased. Yeah, man, in a long game, they'll second that up. It does, but like, it still does. It's still his his movement is still limited. So, especially for the seismic slam, you're like pounding on that thing to try to get away, but you have to like, I don't know. You have to like be super close to the floor to still get away. It kind of makes it pointless. But we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> One second, it can make a difference. Um, Hanzo, his sonic arrow, the detection radius has been increased from 7 to 9 meters. Uh, that one's going to be pretty good because he gets it quicker than he did before. And the radius was kind of small, which kind of like you portioned, on the, portioned off a small area there to state, okay, I'm going to like cover this area and that's it. Um, adding these two extra meters can make a big difference because it essentially gets him. I, I, I forgot how fast he gets his... Uh, uh, his actual sonic arrow. I don't know what the cooldown. I think it was like maybe like eight or nine seconds. Um, but he's essentially going to have like Viz on a lot of areas really quickly. That's like almost as good as a uh, Widowmaker's ultimate, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> like he's going to get that like every couple seconds. Um, Lucio. So Sonic Amplifier. Uh, he actually has another one. So I forgot to combine them. So it's kind of weird oh here it is okay so his amp it up and the crossfade so the speed boost application for amp it up has been reduced from 70 percent to 50 percent so his speed boost has been for at least for everybody else like that thing has been reduced yeah. so he's getting nerfed mm -hmm. um crossfade so a speed boost effect reduced from 30 to 20 percent I guess makes it slower to uh, change over. Um, no, it means like just like without the amp it up, the normal yeah. speed. Yeah. Oh, okay. Speed Crossfade. Boost yeah. So speed boost. Slower. So, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So amp it up is 70 to 50, and then the actual it's just from 30 to 20. So they're making them slower overall. Yeah. Um, Sonic Amplifier, uh, which is his boop, uh, it, now it now counts toward offensive assists, um, which I didn't. I, I'm surprised it didn't before because you get credit for it for for a kill. So yeah. I'm surprised it was never a thing before for like an assist. But 
I guess it doesn't do damage. You can't get assisted it, for it. I think it does do anyone. damage because I'm pretty sure I've killed people. Like when yeah, they're you can very kill last, it, right? like yeah, centimeter yeah. of death, like mm. of life. It was just literally that. Like it just didn't count for offensive assists, which is weird. So it's weird. I guess they, that's more like a quality of life thing, other than like a nerf or a buff oh, kind of situation. Gosh. Yeah, uh, for him at least. <laughs> And wall ride, um, so they nerfed him in that, but they did buff his wall ride. So he's gonna his he's getting a speed buff increase from twenty percent to forty percent wow. on his wall rides. That is so he's gonna be nuts. Super fast. <laughs> he's gonna be nuts uh, on those walls wow. there. Um, yeah, that's only for people who yeah, if you do the wall rides a lot. Yes. Now I'm gonna learn extra well to how to do that. The funny thing is, like you have. And that's exactly what Kit has been practicing too. It's like I told her about this, and she's been practicing those wall rides <laughs> for the the Overwatch Cup. So I wouldn't be surprised if you're gonna be seeing her like flying flying through the walls there. <laughs> um, McCree, he got a slight nerf and a buff. His fan the hammer has been reduced from 55 to 50, which I can say thank God because, God damn, I was getting tired of people just. <laughs> throwing the flashbang and fan the hammer that's all people do yeah. like they're yeah, just charging really you they, you can see the mccree from like miles away running towards <laughs> you because they know that <laughs> that's the only thing they got they have no shots anymore so everybody's just doing that um i think that's a much needed nerd for him um but his dead eye his damage per second has been increased from 275 to 550 after locking on to targets for 2.5 seconds so, yeah, so I guess faster kills with faster his kill with his ults, which I think is also necessary because he's the one taking the biggest risk with his ultimate. Like the guy's yeah. putting himself out there. <laughs> I think that, that that's also more like because I don't know it when when you use him and you try to take down a tank, it takes forever mm -hmm. to get like that this skull, and I think that would make it a lot quicker to take down tanks with that ult. So you don't have to wait like ten seconds just to get that skull on a tank. Yeah. And that's, again, primarily that's done to handle the, the GOAT's meta. But I, I think overall he needed a buff in that ultimate anyway because it's it's mainly used to kind of like um, like as crowd control. Like I, I really don't see, yeah. other than like it's a, unless, unless somebody perfectly sets you up for a Deadeye, the most you're going to get is like, you know, maybe one or two people or something like that because like somebody that's like not paying attention or is just caught off guard or whatever. But if you're yeah. just doing dead eye to do it, you know, everybody's just going to scatter like roaches and hide away <laughs> and be like, that's it. Okay. Um, and it, it can actually attack, uh, uh, barriers and stuff as well. So I seen one clip where somebody was, um, doing his dead eye through Symmetra's barrier and actually outlasted uh, the barrier to get to the people on the other side, oh. including a tank. Yeah. And that was him raw. That wasn't even him, like, damage amplified in any way. So I can imagine how quick that's going to, like, become when he, if he gets, like, Ana's Nana Boost or Orisa's, like, Bongo's or, uh, you know, Mercy, you know, uh, amplifying him with her damage thing. So... He his ultimate is gonna look really dangerous now, and it should be because it's an ultimate. <laughs> yeah. Um. But I'm glad with those. Those are not that bad for me. Um. May, her endothermic blaster. Uh, the primary fire damage has been increased from 225 to 275. Why? <laughs> She's a damage he dealer. A buff. So that's a buff there. Um. Her ice wall. The health has been reduced from 500 to 400. So she doesn't have as much long lasting on her ice wall, which is uh, a lot of the times people use, it, especially on the, the Overwatch League, they use it as a stall thing. I mean, a lot, a lot of us do it as well on the, you know, in the lower ranks here where the time is ticking away on that point and you need to stall. Like the person you pick is May. So they're trying to reduce that. Um, Moira. Her, she got, hers is weird because she's kind of got like, I guess both or at the same time, it's, it's a weird change. So her heal over time duration was increased from three to four seconds. So heal over time. So meaning when she does that spray, like the amount of time it, it, it does healing is, has been increased by one second. Oh. 
but yeah okay mm-hmm. and well i guess it's not really a, a nerf i guess you can count them as buffs because her total healing was increased from 50 to 65 so i guess she's doing more healing over a, a, a i guess a, a longer amount of time which is not bad because i wasn't really a fan of her as a healer um especially i mean it's more how the way it's more the way people play her as opposed to um when they be, how she really when is they don't heal you at all yeah so uh for this one the comments were um the developer comments were the minor changes make mora's passive healing effect on biotic grass slightly more effective when topping off an ally's health so you spend less time like you can spend more time healing somebody or you don't have to like just keep spraying until you're exhausted there because, like, it'll heal for a longer amount of time, which is not bad. Um, Yeah. Orisa got a a buff. Her fusion driver, which is her main gun, the movement speed penalty while firing has been reduced from 50% to 30%. So, like, yeah, it makes her a lot more mobile when she's shooting. She doesn't have to just stay, like, and uh, I think the primary reason for that is because, like, you put your shield down and if you try to shoot around it, like how Winston does or anybody else does that have a shield, she's like super slow and it's like super like easy to target. Whereas now they're trying to like uh, mitigate that a bit. Yes. So happy about that one. <laughs> I figured you would like that one. Um, Farah, which Kehal loves, uh, her rocket launcher, the minimum explosion damage has been increased from 16.25 to 20. So they're pretty much just adding the the splash damage that they took away in the previous uh, <laughs> previous patch, or not the previous patch, but like her previous nerf, they reduced her splash damage, but now they're adding it back. So she still has the same speed with her rockets, which are incredibly fast now, but now she has splash damage. So Fada's going to be quite dangerous. Hmm. Um, Soldier 76, um, his pulse rifle, the damage has been increased from 19 to 20, just adding a little bit more damage for him. Uh, and as far as for a sprint, his delay before you can fire the weapon after using sprint has been reduced from 0.5 to 0.3 seconds. Yeah, it was like, that was so, like no speed, no, there was hardly any time difference right there. Because it's so short yeah. anyway, like yeah, I mean, it's never like, noticed it. Yeah, I mean, either. It's, it's probably at a higher level where, like, you know, the de- you get that slight delay of, like, right before you can fire. Yeah. It's, um, and his tack visor... His ultimate hey, can now target Riptire and Immortality Fields, which I didn't know it couldn't target Riptire before. To be honest, I thought it could have, because yeah. like I guess I'm used to like the the Junkenstein thing where you could target it there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm surprised that it it didn't before, at least on the maybe in the main game. I'm just surprised. Um, and the Immortality Field is the is Baptiste's thing, so that's going to be like a main target for people once that thing gets on the ground because if you get the really the invincibility field or mentality field yeah everybody's going to be like open season on their life points um sombra her hack the cooldown is reduced by half when hacking a health pack which i think is is also a needed little buff for her because honestly playing as a sombra player there's no incentive to hack other health packs for people other than the one you need to go back to to heal when you get hit. Um, your primary focus should be hacking, you know, a tank or hacking, you know, a May character or a mobile character or whatever. That's primarily what I'm, like, in charge of doing. But because you don't want to waste eight seconds on hacking a pack and then, like, you're just waiting there. But with this with this inclusion, knowing that you can hack a pack, like, say, during a, a cooldown phase where, like, if we win a team fight, you can hack a health pack, that's could put us in an advantageous position because then people don't have to be scrambling to get health and there's going to be uh, the health packs there to be taken. Yeah. Um, Torbjorn, the base health has been increased by 50 armor. So he's at 250 maximum health now. Um, but his over- overload, where he goes all nuts, uh, the armor gain re- has been reduced there from 150 to 100. So they just kind of like took 50 from the overload and gave it to his base health. <laughs> for 50 armor it, it it makes him a little bit more survivable in a fight now i would say so not too bad uh widowmaker her infrasight ha- reveals enemy health bars now but it also cancels on death 
So oh. you have to like, so yeah, you, you can't die as Widowmaker mm -hmm. uh, once you do your ultimate because you're going to lose it. Uh, Wrecking Ball. This one was annoying because I do play Wrecking Ball and it's kind of annoying. The Adaptive Shield, it no longer cancels in roll mode, which is an annoying thing because like if you do your the, the slam down with him, a power driver, and you try to like put your, your shield on to kind of roll away, he automatically pops back up. And doing that kind of makes you a target because then you can get stunned by all the thousands of things that can stun you this game now. And, yeah, you're pretty much just done. So knowing you can keep rolling and add the, the shield after that is pretty good. Uh, Junkrat, his frag launcher, the impact damage has been increased from 40 to 60. Which, I don't even know why. This, this is like his main gun. That's not even yeah. like the pancake bomb, I don't think. That's just his main one. So I, that's scary to me. I don't know, man. Um, Reaper, the reaping, the healing received from damage has been reduced from fifty to forty percent. So they know they kind of went nuts with the healer, with the healing aspect for Reaper, and kind of toned it down a little bit. Uh, Zarya, her particle cannon, the alt fire for that has been reduced from two to three meters, from from two, three meters to one to two meters. So. It used to be it used to go a little bit further, so they're just reducing the the mileage on that. I think just primarily because she's a goat's character, and she gets used a lot, so they're reducing that. And lastly, that we have Zenyatta. So his orb of destruction, the damage has been increased from forty six to forty eight, but the orb of discord, the effects been reduced from thirty percent to twenty five percent. So they're nerfing that by five percent again he's a he's a goat character where once you throw that discord on somebody it's going to be straight damage dealing and they're just nerfing them to get rid of that stuff pretty much anybody who's in yeah, the goat so comp they've nerfed yeah. i guess like it makes it so that you give your teammates less of a boost and they just added the boost to him yeah they added the boost yeah which is gonna make somebody like jonak scary <laughs> um but that's it so uh, I know it's a lot to go through, and we talked about some of the ones that we wanted to. But like overall, what do you what do you guys expect, or what are your feelings on the on the the patch notes here? I don't know. It's a lot. <laughs> it's gonna make a lot of changes in the Overwatch Cup. It's gonna massive effects in our Overwatch Cup oh, matchups yeah. now. That's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. Um, I mean, for Zenyatta, like Mez, that that. Might be able to help you doing like, especially if you're doing one v ones there. You know, just doing direct damage from him. I mean, it wasn't a major buff, but it's something more where yeah. like, you know, it, typically if you land a headshot with Zenyatta, you know, you're doing major damage as it is. So, um, that might be able to like, and you know, knowing that they buffed it a bit, could do a uh, grand damage. Uh, Zarya was one that they, where you got to kind of screwed there. I mean, not much. I mean, yeah. they just lowered the the meter, but it did give her. A bit of range on her on her distance just to like you know kind of feel out those throwing yeah, those not, bombs it's like now you have to be a lot more accurate with those yeah. uh the particle cannon to actually do damage just not as much splash um a lot of kitty's characters got 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 buffed there i noticed that like including moira she got something which she was already like in the 1v1s was kind of like deadly as it is um Chunk rat got some stuff. Reaper didn't really get much of a nerf. I mean, he did get technically a nerf, but it's it's not anything that's gonna hinder him too much. And he much need like I I'm glad that we never got to uh, <laughs> like to like she already used Reaper already before like you know uh, using him with this current uh, buff that he had of fifty percent like uh, health res uh, restoration because goddamn I cannot imagine trying to get that into that battle one v one. But it's against other attackers, so it's not like where he's getting a bunch of health back, but from from tanks. Okay, any health is a lot of health when you're in a one v one battle That's like true, that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, Sim, I don't think she got a buff in any way. She just kind of like got that whole laser nerf thing down, but yeah, it's fine. I think she did get a. But so. I like. The one I was looking at says her primary fire damage yeah. is increased by twenty percent. Yeah, that's what I forgot to read. Yeah, so that one so she did get a buff. So Yeah. 
that's another one that got buffed. Junkrat, as we all know, is the king of buffs. So he's yeah. All your attackers are set. <laughs> You know. And Orisa. Oh, wait, I don't um, have Orisa as a tank. I have. Red no, Hawk. you don't. You don't <laughs> have Orisa. You have the pig, Roadhog, and I don't think he has anything. Yeah, I don't think they did anything with him. He's not a goat's person, oh. is he? Not really. I mean, any any tank could be a ghost, but primarily the ones used are Zarya, Rhine, and uh, Diva. Mm. You still shield people. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, you should be happy with that Orisa one. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's going to have major changes for us as far as uh, our our Overwatch Cup there. And it's just... Kinda, it kind of sucks that, like, what the people do in, on the pro circuit mm -hmm. affects the whole game. Because a lot of people don't play that same way. They but don't. I feel like now they're, they're trying to balance it for the Overwatch League and it's affecting everything. Yeah. That's pretty much why they do anything. Like, they do it because, like, oh... The, you know, uh, the pros are, are making the meta this way. So we have to change things around so that, it, you know, it could be more better for them. And then, like, at our level, you know, uh, lower ranks and stuff like that, people don't care about that shit. Like, they, I've never, I've done competitive. I have not yet to be in one GOATS meta. And I usually play tanks a lot. And I've not, like, people just pick whatever the hell they want. Like, people treat competitive at, at my level, which is typically around gold, gold, platinum around there is they just treat it as quick play like quick play plus or something like that they just pick whatever the hell they yeah. want <clears throat> so it's just, it's just annoying um but yeah we'll see how that's gonna you know affect our games and stuff like that and see what kind of change is gonna happen uh should be interesting uh but moving on we'll we got something else that's uh also gotten came out nerfed to all hell and that's anthem it's uh it's not looking good for it. Reviews are at best mediocre, I would say. Like in the ranges of like forties yeah, to I like saw, high sixties like maybe. Fifty fives and sixties and stuff. Like the Metacritic score for it overall is like sixty. Um on the technical level, some of the problems people are reporting are like bugs, long load times, session crashes, stuff like that, you know, where like loss of like gameplay. And, you know, uh, in the middle of, like, a, a long boss fight or whatever. Like, to the equivalent would be, like, going on a raid and then having the game crash, like, in the last hour of it. And then, like, having to restart the game over again, essentially. Um, that's kind of annoying when it's consistent like that. And on a gameplay level, people are just saying it's kind of just... I mean, it's fun for a bit, but then it gets boring. Like, it's... It's just very, you know, it's a loot box shooter, so it's kind of like repetitive in that nature. Where it's just, okay, you're doing this. That the missions aren't anything like extravagant or uh, diverse. It's just go somewhere, shoot something, take care of a mission, and that's about it. And and then you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, it goes on. Uh, people described it very has very reminiscence of uh, like Destiny One, which I don't think bodes well for it. <laughs> I thought Destiny One was. Uh, really good like people loved it i don't remember though i don't think so mm -hmm. people like really did not like it at least i don't think so i don't know go on mm. <clears throat> um i don't know like this already like turned me off to the game and this was supposed to be a game that you know we were all kind of hyped for and i really honestly have no interest in getting into it but the thing i want to talk about is the hope for EA in this game, at least, and many other like AAA developers is kind of like doing the same thing is putting something out there that is like, I, I mean, I could, I could say like unfinished, like at, at best, you might call it like a beta style, a beta format game, you know, mm -hmm. you, you putting it out there, seeing who is going to buy it. Cause you know, at least there's going to be a portion of the crowd that will buy it, uh, like streamers, you know, uh, YouTubers, influencers, people like that who, you know, have to put the content out there or review it in some way. And if they say it's bad or whatever like that, people tend to stay away until you get the big patch. You know, you get these patches maybe a year from now. There's going to be a patch that's going to be yeah. like. I've, I feel like we've talked about this before. Where yeah. Like now games are just feeling like early access. Yes. When they release. Yes. 
and and then like the actual stuff comes in with like a DLC or a season pass or a patch or something later on down the line. And it's it's been an ongoing trend. It's it's happened. I mean, like Anthem's happening. Uh, Battlefront Two happened. Um, even other genres like Street Fighter Five, where it came out and you know people shitted on the the initial release of the game until they patched it with the arcade edition, and then oh well, now Street Fighter is good again. Street Fighter Five is good. You know, um, No Man's Sky is another one that I think we you know we all came back to. Well, not we all, because Mez originally bought the game and then they came out with no man's sky next and then i know i picked it up after that once everybody was saying like yeah it's good it's good now it's good now you know (laughs) um destiny 2 also had that big change where destiny 2 was kind of like yeah it was okay it was all right um but then forsaken came out and that was the one that drew more people in that was the one people were like it's good now it's good now and i think ea is waiting for their it's good now patch (laughs) Um, where it's going to be like Anthem, you know, revised or Anthem renewed or whatever the hell they're going to call the, the the game when it whenever they they release it. And yeah, I don't know. Like if that does happen, is that something you think that you would be interested in getting that like, you'd be like interested in looking at the game once again if they do out put out their it's good now patch? I speak mostly with mess. I know, Kitty, you probably have no interest in this game. Um, I might. Um, unless you did. I don't know. I... For me, I might get it, but like in the summer when I'm not busy, but to play with other people because it is like a big multiplayer game and that's kind of it. Like, I don't know. It can be shitty and I'd probably still play it for the multiplayer purpose of trolling my friends. (laughs) Okay. So you're not even going to yeah. wait for the It's uh, Good patch. You're going to just be like, oh, I'm going well, to get to play with it. Well, that's the thing. The It's Good patch is probably going to be out by the time I can actually play it. So. Mm. I don't know. Okay. What about you, Mez? Yeah, I don't know. After playing the their like beta or demo or whatever they called it, I didn't, like, I wasn't really excited about it to actually get into the game. So, I don't think I would actually pick it up. I didn't think I would pick it up, even with this new patch anyway. Mm. But, uh, and so what do you guys think about the idea of games, of like, you know, uh, I don't want to say developers, but like publishers doing this now where, you know, yeah, they're putting out essentially early access games and, and banking on people waiting for the It's Good Now patch. So, like, they're essentially getting their, you know, the initial customers, and then they'll get the word of mouth customers when whenever they put out their patch and then people saying like oh hey yeah you know destiny is good again i mean not destiny uh, anthem <laughs> anthem is good again or is good now and you guys should pick it up like i it's don't know pretty shitty like they should just have a good game to begin with but like they don't care they care about making money now yeah that's the big thing with it and uh, I don't know what what do you say, Maz? I don't know if you have talked about this before. Uh, I don't know. Like I I can see it from like both sides because I, I I'm just trying to see it from both sides. But the fact that as a consumer we would want the best possible product out, but then there's also like from the publisher developer side, you would also hear a lot of like feedback from consumers where if a game is not out at a certain time that they would just start complaining about it being delayed too long or something like that and then there's like that whole mm, I don't know like, I think idea of go ahead no like the whole idea of like that the no matter what you do yeah pe- someone's not going to be happy mm. I I kind of feel like that would be an argument I don't know I feel like that's a, a little bit manufactured by those those uh publishers and people like those kind of like people at the top you know um not to say that there isn't people who do who i mean who who you know who who don't like bitch about anything that happens with as far as games and stuff like that but i think it's all about who's delivering the message and how it's being delivered you know because you look at nintendo they came out with their with their uh their news about metroid prime 4 saying hey the game was not playing, not looking like the way we wanted it to. It was running essentially like shit 
So we're scrapping the whole thing and starting over. It's like we know it's going to be like a big deal for a lot of people who went for Metro Prime 4, but we want to put the best product forward. So we're giving the, you know the product to we're giving the 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 product to um I forgot who the uh, the developer was now, but we're giving it to the guys who essentially did the Metro Prime series originally. So that way we can get like the best game and give you guys the best game. And people were generally okay with that. Then nobody was bitching like, oh, I got to wait for Metro Prime 4 now. They were like, thank you for being like transparent with the information and letting us know exactly, yeah. you know, what's going on. Because the way Nintendo worded it, they weren't mincing words. They weren't trying to like hide anything about it. They were saying like, look, the game we were doing was turned out like shit. So we're trying to give it to a developer who can actually make it better for you guys. So I, I think it's all about who's delivering the message because if it's EA and they mince their words or they say whatever the hell they want or they delay it for some weird reason or whatever, then, yeah, people get generally pissed about it because they don't trust EA and what they're saying or what, what EA is saying is usually just a lie. Yeah, I guess, but then, like, it, I think it's also, like, depends on the fan base, too. Like, I feel like Nintendo's fan base is not the same as, sorry, uh, the fan base of, like, these shooter games, mm. like... Nintendo's fan base, like guy, I think, is a lot tamer than these like EA fanboys or these shooter games that they would blow up and mm. like they like you said they they already don't trust the EA, mm-hmm. so no matter what they say, they're going into it with like a speculative eye, like very skeptical about what's gonna happen. Yeah, I guess that's true. That is true, and then they'll just hate on it in in their like uh you know. They'll hate on it whenever the game decides to come out or whatever. They'll just hit on like they are now. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I think it's warranted in this case. Um, what I don't think it, it, what I don't think is warranted. Moving on though from this, is uh, how reviews are being bombed for uh, old Captain Marvel before the movies <laughs> even come out. Yeah, um, Mez, you have more on this. What what's going on there? Why are people hating on Captain yeah. Marvel? Well, uh, we've seen this a lot with like I guess a lot of more like recent movies coming out. I think I think it happened for Wonder Woman, for Black Panther, for now for Captain Marvel, where like people go into it thinking it's like, oh, this is like this SJW <laughs> movie where they're trying to put someone else in the lead just to like rake in money or something. Yeah, and people would go to like a review site like Rotten Tomatoes and basically just bomb the movie before even seeing it and i guess this uh prompted rotten tomatoes to change their whole rating system yep i saw that because now i guess like before like you couldn't necessarily rate a movie before watching it but you could have like the like not interested or want to see kind of thing yeah and people people would see the percentage of people who want to see it and people who who are not interested and when you put not interested, you could also put a review. So people would go to these movies, put not interested, and then like write a review about it, just saying stuff like that. We're like, oh, they're doing this. I think like one of the reviews was talking about how uh, they don't want to support the movie because Brie Larson's like a racist and sexist. Where did that come from? And, and from what I saw, the story was like it's because she noticed like a lot of her press circuit. The interviewers were all ma- like all white males, mm-hmm. and she wants to like have a diverse press circuit. So she asks for more like females or more minorities to be like interviewers for her. Yeah, and someone took that as her being racist and sexist. I'm like that's, I don't think <laughs> that word means what you think it means. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I see. It's like she it's hates like, white men. <laughs> yeah, it was misinterpreted as like she hates white guys. But and then like other people were saying like oh this is just like a power grab for or like not like a power grab but like um a popularity thing to get like females to come to the movies because they want to see it and it's not gonna be an actual good movie or something like that. I'm like you haven't even seen the movie yeah at all. It's like you just don't want to see it because there's a female lead or like with Black Panther you didn't want to see it because it, it was a black lead. I was like yeah I just feel like they they don't want to see it because they feel like they're they're forced to accept that there's somebody other like they feel like they're that like there's an agenda at play so they're like i can't watch this movie if i'm being forced to because like there's a woman on in the main in the main lead or there's a black guy in the main lead like 
I'm I'm supposed to be forced to watch this movie. Why can't you just put the best character, the best actor forward? Oh, so it's always gonna be like you know a white guy who's the best actor for like you know what I'm saying like they always state that like yeah it should just be whoever's the best actor for the role and I was like how you know they didn't do that already like they chose the best actor for the role like you but you automatically just assume there's some kind of agenda at play just because there's somebody different and they're kind of like pushing also, like advertising it as that some of that some of that wouldn't make sense it's like oh pick the best actor for the role it's like well I mean it's Black Panther. You also have to go with the character. The character is going to be African. So he has to be like a black actor. You can't cast fucking Tom Cruise to play <laughs> T'Challa. It just wouldn't even make a, a grain of sense. Yeah. And then they, if, it, if it was the other way around too, like best actor forward, then they'd be like, oh, it doesn't make sense. You know? Yeah. Yeah. They're just being dicks. But- yeah, and then like professional but, outragers, you said, uh, was it? You kidding, right? Yeah, they are. <laughs> the thing is, like, the one problem I can see, like, this backfiring with Rotten Tomatoes is now all you're going to see is, like, once the movie does come out, you're going to have people putting in negative audience reviews without, still without seeing the movie. Yeah. But rather than it being, like, the not interested or wants to see thing, it's just going to be, like, oh, we're going to give it a zero without even seeing it. In the actual review after the movie like comes out, waste their life, their time on this like stuff. You know, do you know what I mean? These people, there's, I mean, there are people who have nothing to do, literally nothing to do but this. this I don't understand. Like, go do something else. Like, <sighs> to them, they are doing something. They're fighting the good fight. Of what? Of men's of rights. Men's right. White men's rights. <clears throat> or just men's rights. I don't know because I, I guess with Captain Marvel, it's men's rights. They do not. They don't want to be persecuted by the sheedom. <laughs> I don't know, man. Oh, um, yeah. Another movie that actually affected too was Star Wars. I remember that, that. Like, oh yeah, both Last Jedi and Episode Nine, which is not. It's like fucking months away, but it's already being negatively like reviewed, and I'm like. Have we even seen a trailer for it yet? <laughs> like Jesus <laughs> Christ! But they're hating on it already. Like I'm, I'm like this. This is way too much, man. So we don't even know the title of the movie. I yet. know it just says it's still episode nine at this point, and people are already like review bombing it. So I'm like fucking hell, man. Like yeah, something's got to change with that shit. Cause I don't know. You can't let just let people dictate that. I mean, not like the audience score matters. Honestly, like I don't give a fuck what the audience score is. I generally go by the critics review um anyway and i don't know if they yeah. if the audience aggregate like affects that in in any way i don't think it does i think that's why they separate no. the two things to begin with so it's whatever like they it's just uh, it's just a no i guess all the comments or whatever i guess it's too much for rotten tomatoes and stuff even though the, the ceo was like it, it's not that you know uh you know, uh, I call it. We're not changing it simply because of Captain Marvel. It's just like, yeah, there's a whole slew of movies that this is happening to. Mm. So, uh, yeah, it's been a long time coming. They said. Yeah, this is just the more the most recent one mm-hmm. to showcase it. But all right, Maz, you can go into your week, and then uh, we'll go into Kitty after that. Uh, haven't done too much with my week this week. Uh, we did play some of the Division Two beta over the weekend that just passed. Oh yeah, you no. Know, me and Zan yeah, were on that for a little weekend. bit. Yep. So, uh, I did play. Like, I enjoyed it just because I guess I enjoyed the original Division game. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. For me, I think the a lot of the uh, kind of the thing I liked about the first one was that it was set in New York, <laughs> so mm-hmm. it was like kind of familiar to me. But this one is more like it's in Washington D.C., so it is a different environment. And they did change a lot about the way the system works. I didn't. You don't get to see too much of it. Yeah. In beta. As far as like the level up system and the loot drops and stuff like that, but I enjoyed it as a game. But that's also because I enjoyed the original Division game. What do you think about it, Zen? Um, I, I we talked about it a bit on whether or not like you know this is a game we would I would like we would pick up, and I said if this game was free. I would play it a bit more, but if I have to pay money for it, I probably wouldn't. And that's because I think I'm coming around to the to the feeling that I'm not really 
that big into like like uh like loot shooters right like how you, that's what you call them like what is it like loot shooters yeah. and stuff like that I, I don't think i'm that into it like the looter shooter looter shooters or whatever like that's actually a cute name looter shooters um yeah like the only one i kind of like sustained with was maybe destiny 2 and even that kind of like um eventually peaked for me and even though destiny is kind of like yeah it's an mmo uh shooter or whatever it still was you know a loot shooter because like you, you you got loot for it and stuff like that and even that kind of was like ah, okay i'm okay with this you know it's not something i can play consistently um and i like how crazy destiny 2 could be as well like you know you have all these abilities and you're flying to the sky and like sliding all over the place and stuff like that and a lot of that is not in a game like the division which is based more in like i mean it tries to be based more like grounded in like a reality based thing where like you're just normal people and like you don't have these crazy abilities you're just like soldier people and stuff like that yeah um so the reason I'm saying like, oh, if I had to pay for it, I wouldn't buy it because I know I'm not going to play this game for a long time. You know, it, it it would be a game that I can be like, if it's if it was free, like, you know, one weekend, if we had nothing to do, we'd be like, hey, man, you want to get on? Oh, yeah, I'll get on Division 2 and we can, you know, run a bunch of stuff during the weekend, do a bunch of missions and stuff like that. Um, But it's not going to be anything I'm going to be like, hey, yeah, I'm going to let's let's play this for months and months on end. Like, nah, I know I'm not going to be like digging deep into this kind of game you know um yeah a lot of the stuff about it is fine um some stuff is not like like i enjoyed you know the the like the shooting and stuff like that was okay even though i don't i didn't like the the reticles and stuff like that i liked the feeling how like you know how shooting went and like although some minor noises some minor noise issues happened while we were playing. Um, overall, yeah, the sounds of the guns and stuff like that were pretty good because it was it was a beta, so there were yeah. some. So I'm not gonna hold bugs. it against that because it was a beta, like an actual beta. But like, um, some of the ways that like the sound, like the guns, the way they sound and stuff like that, because there was one particular gun that I was like really favoring, where I just liked the way the gun sounded and how it felt. Um, that stuff was pretty yeah. cool. Um, like. Another thing else like that's pretty cool is like uh, cuz like in games like Destiny you can kind of just be like this walking tank in a sense like if you're powered enough you can just run through everybody in that game and this game kind of makes you feel a little bit more vulnerable so it was kind of cool like coordinating attacks with you where I would be like hey you know uh like cover me, like give me cover fire as I'm flanking this person or I'm saying hey I would tell you man like you know go around and flank him on the right side and I'll just keep shooting at this person this way to distract them mean you know meanwhile mez is like you know making his way around to try to flank them and get a better position that kind of stuff was cool like coordinating attacks like that and everything um we were living out those ubisoft press conferences was that <laughs> living out those ubisoft i know press right living out those, those fake demos those EA presentations where we're just like okay let's do this like get them on yeah. the right side <laughs> all that fake combo they were having and stuff like that but yeah um so that kind of stuff was cool coordinating on text like that but you know like i said it, it 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 has no legs for me. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's just a big problem with that that whole genre in general, that loop based shooter game. Because yeah. so far, I haven't seen a game that really lasts that long. At least for us. Yeah. They're like, there's got to be something to it. Something more of substance. Yeah. That's why I thought like uh, Anthem was gonna be cool, but it's Anthem is essentially that as well. And at 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 that it's a boring like loop based shooter so it's like what's the incentive then like I don't know what you could you have any interest in uh, division no any shooters that I like are usually like non realistic ones cause if they're realistic they're like mm -hmm. really boring to me that's why I like <laughs> that's why I like destiny cause it was like shooting in space crazy yeah yeah and yeah you got like you got yeah. jump pack boots and you can slide and you can do abilities you and, can tackle people yeah. and like hit elbow them in the face that was like the yeah greatest. the guns are crazy fucking have bow and arrows that explode people and shit yeah. like yeah so that's why i like that one but like something like the division where it's based on reality i'm like meh, meh. yeah probably not like gun a you, you can't tell the difference between gun a and gun b it's like <laughs> this gun makes this noise when he shoots and this gun shoots faster yeah. like, <laughs> where's my 
like multicolored sniper rifle. Like that's what yeah. I thought. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So probably not. But like Anthem too, I would that's another thing about Anthem, it's also like not like based in reality shooter type thing. So mm -hmm. it has it, I lean more towards the towards that than the division, even though it's not as crazy. It, it is based a little bit. It, it's kind of like both because, like, obviously there's no, like, Iron Man suits in the world right mm -hmm. now. But this game would it, – it kind of feels like if there were any Iron Man suits in the world, this is how they would play. Like, you don't – you're not – it doesn't feel like you're going to be like, going super crazy in this game or anything like that because a lot of the abilities are based off of, like, rockets and, like, stuff like that. It's not like you can – yeah. Like it's more like of a technological yeah. thing rather than like in Destiny where it's like super, I don't I supernatural, know, but like, like powers, science fictional or... weapons and stuff like yeah. that. This one is just yeah, it's like based more on tech yeah. based reality. So you're still gonna get a sort of reality. It's gonna be, but it's gonna be based on like in like tech heavy stuff. So you're not gonna get crazy shit. You're not gonna get a luminescent, you know, outfit oh. or a luminescent gun or anything <laughs> like that. At least I don't think so. I really don't know. Like they they might really who knows with the. You know, it's good now, Patch. Who knows what they're going to be releasing? Maybe you, you get, like, super jump packs and crazy fucking rainbow missiles or shit like that. <laughs> yeah. All right. And uh, so other than playing that Division game, the only thing I really did was uh, I did some, I guess, cleaning of my stuff in, like, in general. Because I had a lot of uh, old shit around oh my God. that I didn't use, like, are you talking about like decluttering things or something like that kitty thing? Yeah, is? not decluttering in general. Mm -hmm. It was more like a pre-spring cleaning. Okay. So, like I got rid of like a bunch of like clothes I didn't use that or didn't fit me. Like or a bunch of stuff I had around. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, right? Like he's trying to call it something different, but <laughs> I don't know what to talk yeah, about. Yeah, okay. Somebody watched Marie <laughs> yeah, Kondo and was like, just this give me, this is spark of joy. <laughs> no, it Did doesn't. Did you think the things that you but, got rid of though? Did I, no you didn't thank them for their wow. service how dare so you rude. oh my god those things provided like you know uh clothing for you for years joy. <laughs> i don't think you brought me joy <laughs> but okay uh yeah it's like i just like got a bunch of stuff and i did happen to while i was going through it i found like i was looking through some of my comics that i've had which i don't think we've ever talked about but like me and zan used to collect comics. I still have some of his stuff over here. Mm -hmm. And I found a lot of valuable comics that I forgot I had. That you like, had or we I had? Have, I have. Oh, okay. You trying to say none like, of my comics is valuable? I've, <laughs> fuck you, man. <laughs> well, not, not compared to the ones I have. Okay. Like, I have a first appearance of Nightcrawler Colossus, and that's a giant size X-Men number one, which is about, like, a $400 book. I have first appearance of Psylocke, first appearance of Gambit. Uh, I have like uh, Saga number one. I have Morning Glory. I have like a bunch of these like number ones and stuff like I forgot I had in my comic collection. That I'm like, wow, this like I have that stuff like, now separated. I'm like, let me actually try to like, take care of this stuff. Yeah, you definitely um, should. And I can imagine how much like, like Bow has did, then. That he still collects yeah. comics, I think. And then, like, I was going through some, like, the uh, trades and stuff I have. And there's some trades that I guess I forgot I had. So there's some that I have two copies of. Or, like, they might be your copies. Mm. Like, I have two Infinity Gauntlets. I have two Watchmen. A bunch of, like, X-Men trades I have, yeah. like, two copies of. I mean, I can I mean, I mean, can say it now. Yeah, those are probably mine. Because remember a couple of years ago when I told you to pick those up because mine's got mine's got uh, demolished yeah. in a move to Japan and they got like the the movers or whoever were moving it got like they left it out in a crate somewhere in the middle of the rain and it got moldy as hell and destroyed a bunch of my books and comics and stuff like that a bunch of my clothes oh, as well yeah. but a bunch of my yeah. comics were destroyed in that move so I I, I told you I was like hey because I think at the time you were at, you were working at a comic store <clears throat> so yeah. I told you hey could you pick these up because like you know uh, there's no way for me to get them out here because I was I was in Japan at the time, so I was like, yeah. So that's probably why you have extra ones because that might be yeah. it. Like I was trying to remember, I'm like, why do I have all these extra books? Those that, like, sound like, like all the comics I used to have up. and don't anymore. Like Watchmen, yeah, um, Infinity Gauntlet, like a bunch of those, like X Men ones, yeah, like they 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 were ones that yeah. I did have, especially like graphic novel stuff because that's how I usually uh, pick them up. 
um, especially older ones, and they were all just destroyed. So I'm I'm fairly certain yeah. those were the ones that I, I told you to to pick up for me. Like going through like that comic collection just brought back to memories of, like working at that like, comic shop. I'm like, I have a lot of this shit. Like I have, I have a lot of trays <laughs> and comics. I still have like uh, your like Buffy comics here. Those are probably ones that I told the you. The X Men, the early X Men stuff that you had. Yeah. Yeah, I've gotta find but a place. Going for that. through that stuff was kind of cool. I might get like I might, you know, uh, might get a storage unit out here and maybe put those things there or something like that. Um, yeah. Whenever we link up and shit and maybe send those things in like one at a time <laughs> or like bit by bit <laughs> had to do like uh, comic yeah. runs <laughs> but yeah that was about it for my week all right kitty what do you got for your week um <clears throat> so i think I, I well i did i talked to you guys about yesterday a little bit that i watched um a quiet place and yeah, you told us you watched hmm. half of A Quiet Place, and then you got so scared <laughs> that you had to go watch something. You had to go play Overwatch a, to take your mind lie. off of it. Okay. And then go back to watch the other half of A Quiet <laughs> Place. Lie. That's what I heard. I don't know about you, Mez. I'm pretty sure she said she watched half. Because, no. So, like yeah. I was watching it, and it was halfway through. Then you're like, hey, you invite me to your group while you're playing Division, but I'm not going to play Division. I don't know uh-huh. about that. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Too spooky. That's too spooky. <laughs> It actually wasn't that scary. It's more like, yeah, so I finished watching it, and it wasn't that scary, but it was, like, really satisfying at the end because they, like, figured stuff out, and you're just, like, yay. Mm-hmm. But, like, oh, man, it was sad, too. There's, like, a couple sad things, and you're just, like, wow. But it was pretty, overall pretty great. I mean, like, I kind of, because people hyped it up so much, I kind of expected more, but... I mean, like, it still hmm. wasn't, like, bad or anything. And you get to see the monsters, which is always nice, because I think, like, um, well, in Bird Box... Are you a fan of that? What? Seeing the monsters? What do, what do we think overall, like, as far as monsters? Like, do you guys like seeing the monsters straight up, or do you prefer not seeing the monsters and, like, just being, like, dreaded by what you can't see? It- in it movies. depends. It has to be done right if they're not going to show it to you. Because if they don't do it right, it mm. just feels like they're being lazy and they didn't want to add that mm. aspect in there. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like in Bird Box, you, didn't, you never saw them. You never saw it, yeah. And yeah, it felt fine. These, you could look at okay. them. It was just like, you know, you had to be quiet, essentially. Because um, they... There's always the other side too, like where you're in your mind, you're thinking the monsters looks crazy, and then when you actually see them, you're like, "That's it? That's what you were scared of? Like that looks yeah. silly." It, it looked kind of gross, actually. Um, like if you watch it, <laughs> it's like yeah. gross to me. I, I mean, I plan to. I do plan to watch that movie because, like, it was. I know people said it was a pretty good yeah. movie, so I do plan on watching it. But yeah, overall, I would say like eight point five out of ten. Pretty good. Mm. Um, what else? Oh, and then I went to yoga for, like, the first time ever in, like, a very long time. So the one time that I did go what? was, like, a free class, yoga. and it was, like, um, I don't know. It was a free class, and it was, like, overfilled, right? Um, but this time was, like, at okay. a real yoga studio, and it was pretty cool, and it was, like, so relaxing, and then, like, even as they instruct you, they're, like, giving you, like, life lessons and stuff. And I was like, wow, that's what I need. <laughs> <laughs> but then, like, at today I woke up and I was, like, slightly sore still because I haven't used, like, any of my ab muscles in, like, such a long time. And, like, I'm trying to fix my posture, <laughs> so I think it's working because, like, my, my back is a little sore too. But, yeah, it's pretty great. I liked it a lot. Yeah, that's what I need to get into, man. Like, I am, like... Uh, my body is like stiff. I'm not flexible in any yeah. way. So yeah, I need to get into like st- like yoga and stretching, especially as I get like in my old age. I won't be like one of those guys once I hit like sixty, seventy, start getting that like like hunched shoulder, uh, yeah. walking forward. You can't stand up straight or anything like that because your back's too weak or whatever. Yeah. So it was it was pretty nice. And then I napped for two hours mm-hmm. after that because it was like kind of early. <laughs> get those naps in is it a nap at that point or well, is that I woke just up just to go there and then i went back to sleep so you know what whatever you want to determine it was <laughs> it's up to you <laughs> it's 
It's like, what is classified as a nap? I don't know. Listen, like, at this point. point, she just says every <laughs> eight hour naps. This, no, that's I mean, the full sleep. She can she can sleep for eighteen hours, so maybe an hour, eight hours is a nap. I don't know. <laughs> Anything less than four hours is a nap. That's the general rule. It's it, number one rule in the Kitty Cult Manual. Like, did you not read it? <laughs> I don't know. I guess not. It hasn't made its way out here yet. I guess I, I haven't slept in years then. I've just been taking naps all oh my life. Oh my god, you sleep less than four hours? There was, a period, there was a period in my life where like, yeah, less than four hours was, was what I considered a good night's oh sleep. Oh my god. How yeah. do you function in life? <sighs> I took naps at, at at work at my place of work at that time. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways. Yeah, well, it was your fault. <laughs> your damn, your damn. S- you infected yeah, them with the sleep. The, her sleep pores were like <laughs> the in the air. Powder from like Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's kind of it. Oh yeah, I had midterms last week. Um, but it was actually, mm. like, on a piece of paper, so one of them was, like, multiple choice and then, like, an essay format answers, um, and then the other one was multiple choice, and then the other part of that is, like, a practical one, <sighs> so, yeah, I don't know mm. what I got yet, hopefully it's good, I hope so, but I feel like I knew the stuff, so, yeah, let's hope so, I'll let, keep, I'll let you guys know. <laughs> Okay. Well, good luck. Hopefully, it, I mean, hopefully, it all turned out well. I hope so too. But <laughs> my, yeah. Anyways, that's all I did for that week or for last week. Oh. Okay. Um, as for me, it's got two things major that I watched. Um, the first, this one I actually watched a couple of weeks ago, but uh, they haven't had a chance to talk about it. Is the movie Hereditary? Oh, I want to see that. Is um, it good? Mm-hmm. That one is a good movie. Um, I saw that movie. You saw it a while ago. Have you seen it? Yeah. You said? Oh. Uh, what would you think yeah. about it before I get into my thing? I'm not going to go too much into a review, but. It took a long time to get interesting. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, it, it like the first, I guess, the first half of the movie, or first, probably, because it's like a, a two and a half hour movie or something. It's pretty up there. And like I'll say like the first hour first 45 minutes really was slow even with the me. you know with everything that happened with the kids and everything like that that didn't yeah. like that wasn't like you know intriguing nope shit man like, I, I was, don't know i was not that into it until like towards the end where like i felt like things starting to pick up no uh, I, yeah i don't know uh hereditary with tony collette and everything like that's the movie yeah i know what you're talking i'm just about. making yeah. sure you're watching the right you talking about the right movie because like i was interested like, yeah, I, I mean, maybe the first half hour was kind of like, you know, story building and stuff like that. But, like, after with what happened with the kids and stuff, I'm like, damn, man. Like, this movie was, like, it, it, it was, like, impactful. Um, You know, I mean, if you went, if you go in, I would say if you go in expecting, like, a, a straight horror movie, then maybe the last half of the movie is more your style. But the first half is, like, really, like it deals with like an the emotional and like a mental aspect of like a family and stuff like that, especially after like maybe some like after traumatic events happen and yeah. the impact that family members, like past family members have on your family as well. And it kind of like digs into those kind of questions where it's like, you know, you know, uh, what is, you know, passed down or like what kind of like, like what kind of impact do you do you have from family members that are passed down to you and it affects your current family and stuff even if the person is no longer there you know um like you know uh, ancestors and stuff like that so uh to me that was pretty interesting and it was like intriguing like so that that's why like the first half of the movie intrigued me and then when it gets to the second half and you get into like the more i don't want to say typical because that nothing about this movie was typical in my opinion but like there were certain horror movie elements towards uh, the latter half of the movie where and and those hit the notes really well as well for me i mean yeah i wouldn't say it's like a perfect horror movie or anything like that but it's a very intriguing movie it it, it drew me in and like even the wife care how she enjoyed it as well and like i thought it was it might throw her for like a little bit of a loop but it didn't like she was following along with it and everything i was like man this movie is like kind of nuts um so i i i enjoyed it like overall i would say it's like between like 
you know, 75, 80% uh, as far as as being a good movie. Um, Really enjoyable, like, and intriguing, I'd say, uh, you know. So I don't know. I wouldn't say, like I said, the the first half hour was story building. I wouldn't say the first half of the movie isn't interesting at all. I'd say it was it was really interesting. I I guess it. I was going into it looking for like a horror movie, so that might have been affected the way I saw it. But I don't know. For me, I just like I said, it felt slow in the beginning. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um. So another thing I watched, and I'm still currently watching this. So I haven't finished it yet. Um, is uh, the Amazon Prime. A show called The Man in the High Castle, which I, I read the book for it. Um, so it was interesting to me to kind of like trying to see this kind of show and see what it does. And the whole premise of it is like, what if, you know, uh, Nazi Germany and Japan had won World War II and had taken over essentially the world? And that's kind of what happens in this in this show where <clears throat> they those two superpowers like split America up in half where the Pacific, the the West side of America is called the Pacific States and it's uh, kind of like Japanese territory. And the Eastern border and the Eastern side of the U S it's part of the Nazi Reich. So, and that like extends all the way onto like Germany and like all the way, like into the, that side of the world. And then like the more Pacific side of the world is all owned by Japan. They even split like South America down the middle and everything. Wow. Um, so it's pretty weird. And like, you see the contrasting ways that, um, the two sides are like, uh, handling the stuff. They're, they're, they're both pretty still like crazy. And I think it takes place in the sixties. I'm, I'm fairly certain it takes place in the sixties. So it's not like current era America and it's not exactly like the forties. So it, like time has passed, like, you know, people have, you know, have been born in this world. So they're kind of like, just like, this is the only world they've known. Um, and you know, then you have your typical, resistance fighters coming up saying like this is not the way we want it and all that kind of stuff uh it's interesting you know i I like it for the historical like aspect of it where it's like what would happen you know uh uh what could have happened if if this had gone a different way like um if germany had built the atomic bomb first and you know blew us up because like the way they they stage is like germany uh dropped the bomb on washington dc which had an impact on how we handle things. Cause that's where everything comes from. It's freaking, you know, the president and all stuff is there. So then it was kind of like, after that, America was just, you know, rolled over and we, you know, got taken over from that. Um, the problem I have with the show <laughs> is the main lead. And it's funny cause t- just talking about this, like how we were talking about uh, the whole thing with Captain Marvel earlier. She's so like, I, it's like I really don't like the way they portray her. Like she's a she's supposed to be the hero of the show, right? But the way she gets introduced as the hero is really you don't like the female lead <laughs> being heroes in. It's not that because I have I, I mean it's not really that because like I, I was trying to word this like how can I say that because like I do like some female leads and I'm like it can't be that because like one of my favorite ones is Buffy, but. Just the way they frame her, like she goes literally from zero to hero in like a matter of time, in like in in one episode. Like there's no character development for her. Like it was just oh my sister died, so now I'm gonna take up her mantle and be part of the resistance. Like there was no like, there was no conflict for her. Like to be like should I do this? Should I not do this? Like she was never like she was born into this world where this already happened. So she's like a young person. It's not like she's like an old timer or anything like that. That like knew of past America. This was the only world she knew. And all of a sudden, she's, like, saying to her boyfriend, like, you know, this can't be the only world we live in. We have to fight for something better. Blah, blah, blah. And he's just like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, <laughs> like, like you're going to get yourself killed. And she do- I mean, obviously she doesn't. She's the main character. But then, like, all the shit, bef- and then, you know, all the shit befells him. And he's getting And, like, he's the one getting, like, the, the actual character development in the story, which makes it more, like... It would be interesting, like a show that that actually tackled the idea of of a main, you know, a main character that made the wrong decisions all the time would be interesting. It would be different saying like, oh, this character wants to do the right thing, but every every decision they make was wrong or it impacted somebody would be kind of interesting to see because it'd be different. But that's not how they frame it. They frame her like every decision she's making is the right one. 
even though it's affecting everybody she loves, her family, like, negatively, but she doesn't care either way, you know, but then she acts like she does. Like, at le- you know, they, they don't give her a side. They try to make her do everything. Like, if it was at least, like, saying, like, oh, I'm doing this and I just don't care about the outcome of anything, then okay, that's her, that's her stance. Fine. She's made a decision. But she doesn't do that. She makes a decision. She hears other people's points, doesn't care, does it anyway. And then when something bad happens to those people, she's like, oh, I never meant for this to happen. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, they told you this was going to happen. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just doesn't make sense. And it's so frustrating to deal with, like, a main character like that who's just all over the place. Like, you know, she's like, all the stats are, like, at 10. Like, she's smart. She's a good fighter. And she's Like, there's no, no, there's nothing that you can get behind to be like, oh, there's nothing to cheer for. She's never in danger. You know what I'm saying? Like, she gets out of every situation. That makes for, like, a boring... I guess more than anything, she's more of a boring character. Like, there's no conflict for her. She's always on top of everything. Um, I thought there was a name for that. I think you or... Oh, yeah, Mary yeah, Sue. A Mary Sue character. Yeah. Where, like, they're, there's there's nothing. They're, yeah, all their attributes are are maxed to the 10. And it's like, okay... You know, she's smart, a good fighter. She's street smart. She's, you know, she can get out of any situation. She's sneaky. Like, it's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> and it's just, yeah. Um, one of the weirder aspects of this show is one of the, because it follows, like, it follows her. It follows a, a Nazi, like a high-ranking Nazi official. It follows, like, a trade minister for the Japanese. And it follows the boyfriend of the, the main character. Um, those are primarily the four main people for the show. Um, the, the weirdest part of this show is how it has you, I don't want to say like, I don't want to say rooting, but like it, it, you, you makes you look at one of the relationships as far as like the, the high ranking Nazi officials have, I think his name is like open grouper Fuhrer, open grouper Fuhrer Smith. Like they have these weird titles for these characters, but his name is like John Smith, essentially mm-hmm. like his relationship with his wife is probably one of the most stable, open-ended, honest relationships I've seen on TV. It's like, this guy, like, you would think a guy in his position would be all, like, secretive, right? Like, you've seen these movies where, like, the the husband has, like, he's, like, a high-ranking official, and, like, the wife wants to know what's going on, and he's like, it's none of your business, and blah, blah, blah. They get all these fights. The guy tells her everything, and they find ways to work things out together. And I'm like, I don't know. It's something endearing about this relationship, but... They're a Nazi couple. Like, you know they're the bad guys, but there's something endearing <laughs> about how open and honest he is with her. Like, literally, like, any, like, like, information he shouldn't be sharing with her, she'll ask him once, and he'll be like, well, this is what's happening, and blah, 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 and, and she'll be like, okay, you know, like, and she'll take it as she is, like, whether it's bad information, and she gets, like, affected by it, she gets sad, or whatever, but then she comes around, and she's like, okay, like, you know, this is what we should do, or like, yeah, we need to work together. Like, he doesn't, like like you know hold her down in any way and i'm like damn you know like <laughs> these are literally two people working together to figure out a situation mind you they're they're bad situations and stuff like that um but it's it is it's like one of the most endearing relationships i've seen on tv and i'm just like oh yeah like this this makes this person a lot more interesting where you know he's an asshole because he's a nazi <laughs> obviously he kills people but he treats his wife so well and like they treat each other so well and they're like work they work together um but yeah, Man in the High Castle. I mean, unless you're into that kind of stuff, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend watching it. You know, I, I like historical dramas and it's always a fun thing to watch that kind of stuff with uh, the wife as well. Um, but I, I'm, I'm always interested in kind of uh, that stuff. But like, yeah, if you're not, you know, it's not something you have to go watch or go out of your way to watch or anything like that. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's been it for my week. And uh, that's going to do it for us as well this week. On the Nonsense Podcast. Um, stay tuned. We do have more uh, Nonsense or Overwatch Nonsense Cup coming out. Last week we had, I think it was uh, Mazentius versus Kehau in the tank battle, right? Yes. Um, and then we got another one coming out this week, which is another going to be another doozy. Uh, I believe it, it brought us one of the most impact endings that, uh, that uh, we've seen here. <laughs> but we should still have those coming out uh, every week. Uh, so stay tuned for those. Um, but yeah, that'll do it for this week. You guys got anything before we uh, sign off? Mm, no. No. That's All it. All right. Well, I'd like to thank uh, Kitty and Mez for joining us this week. I've been Bit W Zen. 
This has been the Ichiban Nonsense Podcast. Uh, see you next time, guys. Later. <laughs>